Well, my next guest's name might not spring immediately to mind. His long list of achievements in musical theatre and the entertainment industry is outstanding. His early scripts were performed by some of Australia's leading stage and screen stars, including Gordon Chater, Jill Perryman and Barry Creighton. He's written and directed successful musicals, including A Song to Sing in the UK. Along with John Michael Hausen and David Mitchell, he wrote Shout, The Legend of the Wild One, the Johnny O'Keefe musical, and Dusty, Celebrating the Life of Dusty Springfield. His involvement with opera, and particularly Gilbert and Sullivan, is too vast for me even to attempt to list. He's here to chat about his latest project, a fictional book entitled I Confess, The Diary of an Australian Pope. To tell us more, I'm delighted to welcome author, playwright, composer and educator, Melvin Morrow. G'day, Melvin. Uh, Susie, uh, I think I'm still alive after all that. (laughs) (laughs) You've certainly jam-packed a lot in your amazing career. Um, Now, let's start with your book, first of all. The front cover promises faith, corruption, sex, blackmail, just for starters. Uh, In the Vatican? (laughs) Is that believable? (laughs) I think anything's believable in the Vatican, isn't it? Well, I've got a few inside sources, so I think I'd be willing to say uh, it's somewhere between fiction and faction. How does that sound? That sounds great. Well, what, what, how much of it is fiction and what's actually drawn from your 47 years in Catholic education? Um, well, um, I invented, uh, when you're dealing with fiction, I invented a character in a play called Pope to Pope. And uh, th- this character was a, 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 a guy from Wollongong who, by total accident, got promoted and promoted and promoted. And finally, they said it in the Vatican, look, um, we, we want a proper pope. Um, let's put this Edie in there and um, uh, he can just, you know, tread water and uh, tell him to, you know, go around the world, smile talk about peace and, uh, and and don't do anything. And this guy from Wollongong who has an interesting background, which I'm not going to tell you about. <laughs> no, don't either. spoil it. I don't, I don't, me, a spoiler. Um, no, and, and he says, oh, my God, I'm the Pope. Um, and then he starts thinking, well, uh, that's a good idea. And no, this is rubbish. And, uh, <laughs> and suddenly you have the boy from Wollongong going, look, um, uh, and then he says, no, I'm going to do something. They think I'm going to be here and just, you know, sit there. The answer is no, I'm going to do something. And uh, once you have a, a, a Pope who is honest and says, I, I'm really thinking of uh, that makes sense, that doesn't, then you have conflict. And when you have conflict in a... Uh, uh, in a fairly big, uh, shall we call it, uh, community, mm-hmm. uh, then suddenly you have danger. And when you've got danger, you've got a story. <laughs> uh, next. <laughs> you've, got a, you've got a bestseller, hopefully. Now, you've made uh, Pope Vegemite, which I adore. Um, you've actually... Well, no, Pope Vegemite the first and the last, <laughs> as, as they say in Rome. <laughs> <laughs> what, I, what I love about the book, it's so unique because you've actually written it as the Pope's diary. So we actually get a great sense of his unfiltered thoughts and his perspective. Does the real Pope have any sway, Melvin? Well, I I love the idea of a pope saying, look, I shouldn't be here. This is this is nuts. Um, But uh, between now and death, I've got to tell the truth. And and, and the the idea of telling the truth uh, goes right back to those times when uh, you said, Dad, um, you, you told me I'd always be a failure. And I thought I would be. And now I'm his failure as a pope. So I I love the idea of someone, when you write a diary, you, um, well, it may be ambivalent, but you do sort of say, look, it's sort of self-confession, but I need to say it. And I need to say it because I love, I hate. Does that make any sense? Mm, My word. Are you worried at all about the backlash from writing an irreverent 
uh, enlightenedly serious comedy about the Catholic Church in in this woke time that we live in? Um, I'm thinking about the answer, and I, I'm struggling. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't think you'll get any backlash, or no, you're not worried about the backlash. Uh, uh, well, if I get backlash, that'll be great. Um, because in the in the end, these issues have to be discussed. Uh, do I care? Um, uh, no, uh, because the people who won't like it won't like it. The people mm. who will like it will. But in the, in the end, something's got to be up there for discussion. And I love the idea of the Pope that says, uh, you know, if a priest says it or a uh, bishop says, you know, I've, I've got one or two doubts, you go, oh, well, you know, interesting, um, have another drink. But um, uh, when a Pope says, look, this, this stuff's bad up, this is rubbish, and then says, this is brilliant, I love the idea of a man um, at the end of his life saying, I don't think all of this adds up the way it's meant to be. And um, uh, I, I find that intriguing because I, I suspect it's as human in everyone listening to us now as it is in every Pope who's thought, oh, I better not think that. And my Pope says, well, I'm going to think that. <laughs> now, the book is called I Confess, Diary of an Australian Pope. It's available now on Amazon.com.au. Uh, Melbourne, I, ca- I can't let you go without asking you about the Mavis Bramston show and the Philip Theatre and working with the likes, likes of Barry Creighton and Gordon Chater and Jill Perryman. I mean, the names are just unbelievable. Well, the, the 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 privilege, the joy was mine. Uh, I, I I think I probably did realise it at the time, but uh, yeah, uh, I I had the joy of working with uh, amazing talents, and and those amazing talents were encouraging to me. I mean, for God's sake, I was uh, twenty or something, mm-hmm. but that, they 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 encouraged me, and we we also had our. Um, occasional collisions, not least with um, Bishop Muldoon of Sydney. So I'm very glad for all the clashes. Oh, I see. Oh, should we ask you about that clash? Uh, are you asking me? <laughs> yes. Well, um, uh, I mean, it was another time, but I, I, I was um, uh, teaching at the time and I'd also written a song. There was um, a, a mad dance craze called The Limbo and I thought, oh, right, well, why don't I write The Purgatory? And uh, that, that seemed to me, you know, somewhere between witty and um, whatever. And so I did. Uh, I've, I've, I've never been very good at... Um, <laughs> uh, standing back, and so I wrote this song. It was, I thought, it was sort of funny. Uh, but anyway, I got a phone call from the um, from Channel Seven saying, uh, from a very nice lady who liked me, and said, "Look, um, this is about to become really serious. Bishop Muldoon is going to say um, a lot of nasty things about you and your mm-hmm. song. Do you want to change your name?" On the credits, and uh, n- normally I, I've always been fairly cautious. But uh, as a youth, I said absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Anyway, they had a thing called that night called the burning question. I think it was, and Bishop Muldoon, who was probably two, you know, three sheets to the wind, um, uh, said all Catholics, this is blasphemous, outrageous. All Catholics should sell their shares in Ampol. And oh. I'm sitting there thinking, oh. Um, this is not terribly good for my current employment. Uh, <laughs> but uh, maybe I should have called myself, you know, Nigel Sponge or whatever. Anyway, I went, I went to the um, director of uh, Riverview the next uh, morning and said, oh, look, here's the script. Um, uh, and then I stood there and he read it and said, oh, yes, Melbourne. Uh, I, uh, I don't think it's blasphemous. I just think it's... Uh, extraordinarily untasteful. <laughs> and I thought, good, well, I'm employed. Uh, I love and it. So, yeah, there's me and Bishop Muldoon, and uh, <laughs> uh, life's mad, but here I am again. I don't think, I don't want to cause trouble. What I do want to cause is conversation. Mm, for sure. Now, as the father of the chasers, Julian Morrow, you describe... Oh, sorry, you... sorry, which one is that? I, 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 <laughs> 
Oh, oh Julia Mara, yeah, yeah. I think I'm, yeah. No, I'm his father. That's right. That's right. You actually describe yourself as an experienced jail visitor. Well, uh, <laughs> Julian, um, look, uh, <laughs> uh, maybe something goes through the family, but uh, Julian's been a, occasionally a naughty boy. But when he's been a naughty boy, he has caused international delight. <laughs> uh, and uh, I can't tell you how proud I am of him. Oh, well said. Now, do you think, Melvin, that the Chaser Boys could get away with doing this, the sort of satirical humour that we watched on The War of Everything, which was, I think, back in 2006, 2009, these days, especially that controversial stunt that they staged at the Apex Summit in Sydney uh, you, in you, 2007? You'll never, beat, you, you'll never beat the Apex thing unless, you know, they, they go and... And, and call out Trump. No, you'll you'll never read that because the, the whole thing they they knew it wouldn't work, and uh, they they had all along the way various you know ways of um uh, of saying oh well isn't this funny? And then when they got there, it was just amazing. No, I I, I don't think so. Mm. But I'll tell you what, I'd love the Chaser Boys to um, bump bump into Trump into, and actually dare. To say something to to him because I, I really do think that um, uh, th- this is immensely serious. But so the long answer to your question is no. <laughs> Thank you, Melvin. Melvin Moore. Now, if you'd like a copy of I Confess: Diary of an Australian Pope, it's available right now on Amazon.com.au. Melvin, thank you for sharing uh, your story and some of your experience that you've had over an amazing career. Look, Susie, it's an absolute delight. And um, uh, I think we have uh, some pretty naughty memories between us. <laughs> I'm sure we have. Perhaps we should share some more of them on another occasion. I'll be there. Thanks, Susie. <laughs> Thanks, Melvin. That's Melvin Morrow. He is the author of, uh, of a rather witty book called... I Confess, Diary of an Australian Pope. And as I said, available on Amazon.com.au. Time to take a break and I shall be back with your calls and your emails and lots more right here on 2GB4BC. And no matter where you're listening to us, even if it's on the app, we love it. We love to hear from you. Talk soon.